Dear viewers, uh, it's a great pleasure uh, uh, to have uh, um, guest uh, uh, Sean McVeigh, which is also known uh, as a guitar and voice uh, of King Buffalo, all the way from uh, Rochester, New York. Uh, welcome to our show, Sean. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining. Uh, how, how have you been doing? I mean, considering uh, yeah. everything. Yeah, you know, doing okay. Has a lot going on. There's a little mm -hmm. stressful times, but you know, you just try to, you know, keep on keeping on, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best we can do, I guess. Yeah. Um, we. I mean, I was uh, preparing the interview mostly uh, um, regarding your last. Uh, release which is a dead star which came out in uh, in march of 2020 um but uh, yesterday uh, actually you tricked me you surprised me by posting a pic on on social medias uh, on social media uh, about um, a test press and i just uh, read now um an email uh, um that uh, I received uh, about the the new uh, release, uh, but uh, tell me what's going on. Uh, yeah, so we're doing uh, releasing our performance from Freak Valley Festival. Uh, was it was it 2019? Mm -hmm. Yeah, last year. Yeah, um, on vinyl. Um, it's going to be only available on vinyl, and the. The digital download code that comes with the vinyl uh, won't be pressing it on cd or releasing it digitally um so yeah we're pretty excited about it it's our first live record that we've ever released um so it's the first for us and we're excited what's uh, what's the reason uh, uh for pressing uh um, releasing a live record uh it was well it's something we've always wanted to do mm -hmm. um we just hadn't done it we hadn't had a good recording hadn't had a like a good performance hadn't had a uh you know something that we should felt like would be good to press up and actually it was the guys at freak valley that kind of approached us with the idea they had you know they had the the recording and everything and um they're like hey we're thinking about doing this so it was sort of a joint venture uh between our two collective uh, parties is the only recording you have of that tour i mean i, I remember um actually seeing uh, seeing that um uh, that video uh as many of uh, of the freak valley festival and luckily i wasn't there uh of that year and it was like uh i think it was one or two weeks before you came uh to berlin uh and honestly say it was pretty um, uh, coherent let's say with uh, what i could um hear live then when when you played in uh in badehaus in uh, in berlin uh, you didn't have any other recording. Was uh, as you said, it was a pro mostly a proposal from them, no? Uh, yeah, I mean, occasionally we have uh, like bootleg recordings, but there's sort of lo-fi stuff mm -hmm. for, from a lot of our shows, and those are available on our website for free. Anyone can have them, but we didn't have like a a really well recorded mu multi-track performance mm -hmm. um at like a really cool show like the vibe was really good at freak valley the stage stage was really fun the crowd was amazing um so it all kind of just worked out um let's go back uh, some years uh, um which uh, in your case is gonna be um, i guess almost 10 years uh, uh to the foundation of king, Buff king buffalo how did uh, everything start uh well it was uh I believe around 2013 um dan our bass player for king buffalo we were in a band together before king buffalo um and scott our drummer was also in a band he was in a separate band he was in a velvet elvis we were in a band called abandoned buildings club mm -hmm. both local bands in rochester um and his band had some uh interpersonal problems and our my me and dan's band was also kind of falling apart a little bit um and so scott had an idea because they had just made they had just made a new record uh and they were supposed to go tour in support of that record but they kind of fell apart right before this tour was supposed to happen he didn't want to cancel all the dates and be stuck with a bunch of copies of this record that he could never get rid of so he asked me and dan just to come in and fill on fill in on bass and guitar 
and we were our, we were just going to play some Velvet Elvis songs. Um, also, one of the other guitar players and singers from Velvet Elvis also was was in. So it was Scott Randall, who was the original fourth member, myself and Dan. And instead of really learning much of the songs, we just kind of started jamming, mm-hmm. and we just were having a. It was it was flowing really well. We had a really good groove uh, between the four of us. And we ended up writing a, a handful of songs and recorded them really quick and kind of put together what is the dem- or our demo. Um, and then we needed to come up with a name. We were like, well, why don't we just, why don't we just become a band? Like, we can do some Velvet Elvis songs because we didn't have enough material to be King Buffalo yet. So we had a couple King, uh, couple Velvet Elvis songs, a couple King Buffalo songs. And then I believe there was a song or two from me and Dan's old band as well that we kind of you know frankenstein and played uh and so we settled on the name king buffalo and jumped in a van and toured and had this in in, in a like business sense it was really stupid because you'd show up to places and then be like well (laughs) are you yeah are you velvet elvis or king buffalo (laughs) luckily it was early enough that no one cared like there wasn't even anyone at the shows. There was just us, <laughs> you know, playing the bartenders. Usually there was a couple shows that had people, but for the most part, you know, it was like a bunch of guys living out of an RV, just like farting around, touring around. It was really fun. Um, but yeah, not a lot of people there. You talked about the demo. Uh, it's something, were you singing in that time or? Um... Um, Actually, so it was myself and Randall, who was our original fourth member. He actually did, so he sang lead on In Dim Light, and I sang harmonies. Uh, Pocket Full of Knife, we, it's kind of harmonies the whole time, so we were both singing together the whole time. And then Providence I, I sang lead, and he did harmonies. Um, eventually, shortly after we did the demo, um, he his life was pulling him in a different direction so he ended up moving to another city and everything you know so we kind of parted on friendly terms we love him we you know he's had it's worked out really well for him his move and it's worked out well for us so um yeah nice we deal. were a four piece uh, initially that star uh, um i see in comparison um to orion and longing to be the mountain uh, a bit of a different mood um i don't know if i can say um maybe the the melody that we can hear um uh in uh, in especially in longing to be the mountain in the in the title track uh, in for instance in like a, a morning song uh, is that that star uh, is uh, as a different mood uh, less uh, joyful uh, i don't know maybe it's the maybe it's the maybe it's the title uh, uh, tricking me what do you think uh no i think i think you're right yeah um it definitely has a darker uh vibe than some of our previous releases um yeah that's, you you're definitely accurate how was the the conception the, the conceivement and uh, as well the development the development of uh, dead star musically it was kind of the product um we we wanted we knew we wanted to write and release something we were you know kind of working on some different ideas so red star was sort of a big jam that we put together um but the rest of the album kind of developed um sort of separately uh kind of working more individually a lot of stuff that like i kind of worked at it worked on at home and then brought to the band and then we worked on it together and and sort of kind of cutting cutting things frankenstein and kind of putting things together like that um so yeah it was it we initially had the idea to just do an ep we weren't going to do i mean it, we still kind of call dead star an ep even though it's what 36 37 minutes or so mm-hmm. um but yeah it uh lyrically kind of a theme like um the 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 sort of vibe of the whole record things are like pretty weird and awful in in the united states right now um and so it's hard to not i know for me as as scott helps a lot with the lyrics as well but um as the main lyricist and songwriter it's kind of hard for it not to creep in um in, into the music so as we've seen 2020 has been a bit of an awful year <laughs> and so it's not surprising that our first release of our only release of the year is pretty dark 
but you you worked on it uh, already in 2019 or do you, or some some of it the end been... of it was kind of the end of 20 i think we really started working on it in december and oh, i mean okay. I, it, we like finished it um it might have been the end of 2019 yeah mm-hmm. i can't remember when it was exactly that we sent it off to get pressed but yeah it was end of 2019 early 2020 why star and why dead <laughs> that's um well i like the way it sounded uh and and just kind of <laughs> kind of feels a little bit like you know uh if as a collective of humanity if we keep going the way we're going you know the planet's going to shake us off you know we're going to be left with a with sort of a dead rock flo- floating through space um and so that i mean that was kind of the inspiration of it and Dead Star mm-hmm. just kind of sounded nice, and yeah. I mean, in general, you got uh, a way off uh, uh, to space. I mean, at least uh, uh, reading the titles, uh, mm-hmm. I would yeah. say. You know? um, what about the recording of this album? Again, we kind of it was kind of a different process from for us a little bit. Where, like I said, only Red Star was really written as a long jam. Uh, everything else was pretty much written. Uh, sort of piecemeal um so there was some different uh we put it together differently than we had other records um which was something we kind of wanted to play with we like i said initially our plan was to have it just be an ep and have it you know make it really fast release it really fast have it be a short release just to kind of put something out and it just kind of kept growing um we really wanted to experiment on the record we wanted to try different things things we hadn't tried before uh, sounds we hadn't used before um grooves beats we hadn't used before time signatures uh tempos all, we, we really just kind of wanted to mess around and it just kind of kept growing until it became the whole album i mean it's our first time we have uh, pretty much fully uh, synth electronic song like on a record. In ecliptic, ecliptic, ecliptic yeah. Mm-hmm. Ida Karine is a pretty wild time mm-hmm. signature. Um, it's, it, you know, kind of just this weird sort of looping, awkward pattern for most of it until we had that really hard cut in the middle. So it was, it was interesting. Um, I used an alternate tuning for the whole record on guitar because um, I kind of was feeling in a bit of a rut writing wise before the ep it was just kind of like kept playing it felt like i was playing the same riffs over and over again so yeah it was a lot of um there's a lot of experimenting we really kind of wanted to have fun trying new things did you already wonder uh, uh, how to then play it live as there are several stuff <laughs> that i guess some live is gonna be pretty hard yeah yeah there's the stuff trio. that some some of it live is kind of borderline impossible um but we kind of figured that out after the fact we didn't want to worry too much about it as we were writing it because we just wanted to serve what would be the best make the best recording out of it um certain songs lend itself better live than others we actually so we did the quarantine sessions videos for youtube um in march and one of them you know we did songs off of uh dead star and it actually worked pretty well um i think we did red star one and two and uh ida karine maybe something else in there but uh it actually ended up coming together pretty well it was iffy at first trying to figure out how to do it definitely took some practicing with because i had to use a looper pedal uh, Mm -hmm. and things like that but it was fun i mean i think good thing i guess is that uh, you'll have time to to think about uh, how to play who knows (laughs) who knows when the next time we'll get to perform will be so yeah we have lots of time to figure this out at this point how how was talking about uh, the topic of the year uh, how was this period of um, no gigs i mean were you able to um to have some gigs or not at all no no we had to postpone or cancel basically every gig i think we we played we played like one or two shows this year in like february mm-hmm. um so it was it was early Before in the year the madness. And yeah we we were supposed to go on tour and third week in march i believe at this point i think we would have gone and returned from three tours so far mm-hmm. um and so yeah we've been stuck at home um which you know 
definitely missing missing touring a lot missing performing um but it's kind of put us a new new focus like we've been writing a lot of material which we're really excited about um which we kind of hinted at in that email you re- referenced uh mm-hmm. yeah so we'll have we'll have some announcements soon for upcoming releases in 2021 um mm-hmm. that we're really excited about and i can't really say too much more than that right yet Okay, I hope some word word uh, will come out. Yeah, yeah it's just okay. not not quite ready for the the full announcement yet. So, okay, very nice. um, yeah. um, we'll talk again. Then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. We thought when when the time comes, we'll do this. Again. <laughs> how was the um, how weird or uh, how fucked up? I don't know. Who was the promotion of uh, Dead Star? You know, uh, it was really scary. Um, you know, because we're we're a touring band that's how we've you know been able to do it um f- to be able to have it at all be financially viable was we had to go and perform and sell t-shirts and records at shows so we were really kind of scared uh when it happened but we've been absolutely blown away um by the amount of support it's received online um internationally and domestically uh it's been it's been really cool um to 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 get the feedback from fans from all over um and how you know into it people were um i don't know it's it's kind of humbling to be honest um and so we have to we're gonna have to figure out a way to uh repay everyone for all of the support they've given us during all this which you know every every band is in this situation you know so it's not it's not like it's just you know every every band every band that tours got hit really hard everything just shut down and mm-hmm. who knows when it's going to come back um so there are some optimistic let's say, news uh coming from the u.s um so we might be able to to have tour again maybe next year who knows um but um i've been talking uh, um to bonnie of death valley girls uh, um, some weeks several weeks ago um and she told me about the business model of uh, of a touring band you know which is selling uh, individual records individual merch uh, uh traveling incredibly distances uh, incredible distances uh, do you think is a um, sustainable model for a band uh, or do you think it, is there something uh, on, it, on it that in it that uh, at one point should slightly change what do you think um i mean i think it's it's this is going to be a long kind of convoluted answer uh so there are things about the music industry which we all can agree are, are pretty messed up um okay that that would really i would like to see changed um and certain companies in particular that uh take advantage of particularly lower level artists um pretty pretty hard um a lot of like the streaming stuff is really great on one hand because it's able to distribute stuff all over the place but the amount of return that artists see is so minimal um it seems a bit messed up but you're able to to make up for it in touring and selling t-shirts and and records um so i don't know the kind of joke i always make is you know being a touring musician nowadays you're essentially uh, a glorified t-shirt salesman you know so <laughs> like the music is really your marketing tool to get to sell t-shirts because that's how i mean essentially that's how you make the money on, on that's how you make any money on tour um the margins are bigger you know gas is expensive the guarantees aren't big you know you're not getting a ton of money at the door you know from the from the promoters from the venues so you have to you have to be able to sell merch um so yeah it's i mean that's how we've done it that's how we've always done it um and we i mean definitely itching to get <laughs> to get back on the road um so i don't know i don't know if that really answers the question uh mm-hmm. it kind of is a bit of like yes it's good and it's also there are some things that aren't so good so um being diy for the most part which is mostly we're a diy band um it works out well for us as a way to you know we're able to tour and and sell stuff enough stuff that we can supplement you know and and keep it going i don't know if you want to talk about the elections i have this uh, as a bonus question that uh, i can go on about politics all day if you want <laughs> no i, I don't mean, know how much your viewers would like that 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, wh uh, what did you vote? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, um, what uh, do do we honestly see um, some a bit a brighter future now that um, the orange guy is uh, gone? Yeah, I mean, it's hard not. So I'm really happy that it looks at, like right now, like he lost the election. They're trying to not have that be the case, which is terrifying. Um, yeah, I, I would have, there are things, Joe Biden isn't the guy, I don't love Joe Biden, but I certainly think it's an upgrade. So, you know, I, I will, yeah, you know, I, Happy to see Orange Man gone, but we need to do a lot more. He wasn't the only problem right now in the United States. We have a long, long list of problems. So now that he's gone, maybe we can start to fix some other problems, whether or not we're able to do that. It doesn't look right now like we're really going to be able to, like we're a bit of a mess. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I hope so. I'm trying to stay optimistic, um, but we'll see what happens uh, in January, February when he's finally out of that house. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, mm, you know, I come from Italy and uh, for really several reasons, uh, I see Trump um, really related to um, to Berlusconi, what was the uh, what what happened in Italy. And uh, um, of course, I'm also happy that uh, Trump is more or less gone. Uh, but uh, do you think uh, that... Um, um, the whole movement uh, that basically um, was based is based uh, on being uh, against Trump. Is do you think is then able to to give a, a real political offer? And um, you know, uh, man, I um, there are there are there are really good politicians in the, in the United States that are have have a vision, have a plan. Um, they're unfortunately not the majority right now, so. We have, like I said, I just have to, I have to be a little bit optimistic. I don't have a lot of hope, but I have to try to be optimistic. Um, you know, the biggest, the biggest disappointment, the thing I kind of struggled with was while Joe Biden won the election, and that's good, Democrats also did not pick up any power in the Senate mm -hmm. and lost some ground in the House. That's not good, you know. So now you have potentially, you know, it's, it's going to be really a bitter contest for the next two to four years of you know crazy republicans making ridiculous demands and not letting anything get done and democrats mm. that are too cowardly to get anything done and a couple democrats that are really good and you know so uh it's tough i i yeah like 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 you were saying there 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 has to be more than just orange man bad and right now there isn't um a huge uh, there isn't a huge movement of that right now. There's, there is support. There are people that are trying to lead that, but um, until, I don't know. My only hope is that maybe, maybe they were kind of playing lame duck like that just to try to win seats. But at this point, like now I can think you got to take the gloves off and um, got to really start to start to do some work. Hmm. Maybe it's, um, maybe for the future will be time. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, um, of course, my personal opinion to um, not, I don't want to say get rid, but um, to open a bit also the election to um, to other parties to see something. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a huge fight and that's a thing that I think would eventually be great. Um, part of the problem, I think, right now, though, is how little engagement there is in the United States. So like, while it looks like, you know, half the country loves Trump and half the country doesn't, it's really more like a quarter of the country loved Trump and a quarter of the country doesn't. And then there's, I think, so we had record breaking turnout, record breaking number of people voted in this election, but I think it was still around 60 to 65%. I think the highest number I saw was 67, but mm -hmm. I don't even, that's still really low. That's of register of people eligible to vote to have only sixty to seventy percent show up is bad, you know. Like we need to have mm -hmm. 
we need to have people participate. You know, we're they we don't have a choice to pay taxes or not. You know, they're taking your money, whether you whether you choose to participate or not, they're gonna take your money. Mm -hmm. So you might as well get to decide who gets to spend it. That's all, you know. Yeah, I mean, maybe the um, the the numbers that will be important. Uh, I mean, this is not uh, an issue only of US. This is a, absolutely a general issue uh, of the last uh, 30, 20, at least uh, uh, 30 years, uh, which is the basically the political political engagement of people. That I mean, how people are active politically. So not only in terms of voting, but maybe on, also in terms of uh, um, connecting to each other and uh, trying to solve problems. Uh, so basically, uh, to the fact that uh, political parties maybe should have also a, a ground, uh, a basis of, uh, of that, I guess that's a, that's a big issue, I see. Mm -hmm. And and I think for politics, uh, <laughs> it's more than enough. I think it was uh, 10 minutes only for that. So. Hey. Um, and it's almost also, uh, we are almost also done uh, with the interview. Uh, I want to um, ask the last question, uh, uh, which maybe involves uh, three or four questions. What, to see, what do you see uh, um, artistically uh, the future? How do you see the, uh, artistically the future of King Buffalo? And uh, what do you want uh, to experiment uh, in your music? Um... I don't know if there's any one thing that I could think of right now that we want to experiment with. Um, and like I said, we're going to have some announcements soon. So I, can, I know I can say some of the stuff we've been toying around with is unlike anything we've done before um, in different directions. So we have, uh, so we'll see, uh, you know, I guess we'll, people just have to see how things, you know, how they interpret it when, when it gets released. Um, and I guess the future for us is we I, we would love to get back on the road um, when it's safe to do that. Um, we totally understand that it's not safe right now. You know, we, for us, the the risk isn't worth it. If anyone came to one of our shows and got sick or spread it to anyone else and anyone died, it just doesn't seem, I, I mean, we love what we do. We take it very seriously, but it's not, you know, it's not worth anyone's health you know to to go and play loud rock music it's it's not we all love it but let's be honest it's not that important um so we're just at this point we want to focus on just being as creative as possible um making content and uh releasing things for people uh until we get that green light where uh we can go and perform again is the um, trio model under discussion um no no i mean we we have a really good workflow with the three of us um and so there's like at this point there's a kind of a lot going on i don't uh you know even as a three piece dan's playing synth as well as bass i'm playing guitar and synth and singing so we have a lot of layers going on um we have at times in the past toyed with the idea of a fourth member um and we'll never say, you know, we'll never say absolutely not, never. Um, but right now, we have a, a, a good flow between the three of us. We we're able to play off each other pretty well, and we're able to keep things moving. Um, so I don't know if I see us adding anyone into the mix. It'd have to be the right, you know, just it'd have to line up as a, as a thing um, that we have, you know, have a comfort level with, with them. And I don't know, as of right now, we just don't really see a need for it it's kind of nice to have a little bit of the rules of like, well, there's only three of us. We have to, you know, like um, for me, it can be, I can get easily carried away with the writing and arranging of like, well, let's add this, let's add that, let's add this, let's add that. So it's kind of nice to be able to say, no, 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 there's only three of us. Like we can't add, you know, a crazy piano part or, you know, whatever, or, or dual leads. Like I try to trying to keep it within the realm of, something that's possible it helps to have a sometimes it's nice to have rules i guess we'll say that mm. and also if i can add something i feel i think a 33 comma 33 is better is better than 25 or 20 if you divide the incomes 
Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, one less person to pay for sure. <laughs> Absolutely, um, Sean. I really want to thank you for uh, for this interview, and I wish you really the best of luck uh, um, for uh, for the next releases. And I'm really looking forward to know what's going on, what's boiling in the pot. Um, and uh, to the viewers, uh, uh, please, is really, really, really important uh, uh, to support uh, underground music. Uh, because as we just uh, heard uh, um, the, the bands now that they, they can barely can play any show uh, especially of course in the US so uh, put your hand in the wallet if you can and uh, support uh, underground music and support uh, underground bands do you last last thing do you have in mind any live stream again or um, um, possibly at some point um Right now, we're really focusing on new material, so we have uh, we're we're keeping plenty busy. We'll say that. So um, maybe once we get to a point where we can take a break from that, then we'll do a live stream. But for now, we really want to um, really want to get some of this stuff done and be able to announce some things. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, at some point possibly, but we think it uh, what we'd be better at would be making some new things absolutely thanks sean and uh, see you soon see you in europe yeah i hope so thank you so much and uh, stay healthy and have a good one Cheers.